Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays and it's time for a Factorio update. So this is, as always, this is Space Exploration and I've been making some quite good progress. <coughs> so as everybody has been desperate for me to get onto for absolutely ages, <laughs> I'm now making, I've now made a start on Arcospheres. Now I've not done the complicated part of it yet, I've just done the, what I was going to call the easy part, but to be honest it's, even the easy part is quite difficult because this is Arcospheres and everything is ludicrously complicated. So let's let's go through this from the middle outwards, and so I'll start. So, in order to get an Arcosphere, you have to launch an Arcosphere probe, an Arcosphere collector, sorry. And this is essentially is is a probe rocket, a probe uh, like the ones I've been using f um, from Kalidus orbit and everywhere else that go out. Where is it from? Uh, from here. They're launched by the probe rocket silo here. They go out. They get the they get the data cards. Now, in the case of these ones, um, the Arcosphere collectors, they go out. They collect some Arcospheres and they bring them back. So it's a very very similar process. Um, in fact, it's very very similar indeed. The main difference is that these things are rather expensive to build. So. It takes a lot of aeroframe bulkheads, quantum processors, dynamic emitters, and aquium cubes, and then the hard, the actual hard part of this is these antimatter canisters, because <clears throat> each one of these, each antimatter canister, and these these go round and round in circles. So you can see it takes ten canisters in uh, of antimatter, and then puts gives the canisters back again. So you get the so the canisters are being passed round and round this system down here, and, being, and there's a small supply of them in this um in this chest. Um, and then this machine here fills them up. As you can see, it's, it's filling up with antimatter stream, and then it'll it'll fill the canister up, and then pass it across into the Arcosphere machine. Now, the the, uh, the problem with this is that generating antimatter is kind of is kind of it's not difficult, but it's, it's it's kind of expensive in energy. So here we've got um, to make one of these antimatter canisters takes a thousand antimatter stream, and to make one of these takes ten antimatter canisters. So we need to, we need ten thousand antimatter in order to make one of these Arcosphere collectors. And so I've done the normal thing where I've got I've got a train coming in here that ca carries the antimatter, drops it off, unloads it out here. And now trains aren't the ideal way to do this because every, every each train load that comes in is only capable of making two and a half Arcosphere collectors because they're so expensive in antimatter to make. So in hindsight, <clears throat> maybe I shouldn't have done this here. However, this is where all of the um, all of the other ingredients come from. So. The, um, the aeroframe bulkheads are here, the quantum processors are here, the dynamic emitters are made here. I'm bringing the Naquim cubes in by train as well, so I think it makes a certain amount of sense to, d to do this here. Even if it does mean I've got an endless supply of trains dumping antimatter in here and then just having it drain straight back out of the tanks. So it's, yeah, it is basically working though. Now, so where is the antimatter coming from, you say? Well, that's the next thing. Originally... I had um, a machine here. This this is making uh, making antimatter. It's kind of, it's making. We've got particle accel the particle accelerator making, making the, uh, the the pink clouds are being turned into purple clouds, and that's being made from up here where we're making all of the plasma, the orange clouds. So it's a three-step process. And this was it, it was working, but it was very very slow. I mean, if we look at these tanks over here, we'll see these are filling up extremely slowly over um, they're, 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 there's 20,000 in there at the moment but it, 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 it's not quick in fact what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deprioritize this in fact no I'm not I'm gonna show you show you the other one I made so up here I've made a new area and this is this is simply producing antimatter as fast as it can um, so I've got a massive array of plasma generators here and then a fairly large number of particle accelerators and a couple of material fabricators that are making the actual antimatter themselves now this isn't remotely balanced at the moment as you can see here, this tank is completely full. This tank is completely full. But I can't make any more of these because, for, for reasons that I shall get into in a moment or two, um, because it's a bit of a yak shave. But we are producing the antimatter at a decent rate. As you can see here, we've got almost 60,000 here, so there's plenty in there. Now, one of the things I want to do is I want to bump up the priority here. So I want this to be the, the first priority for, tick, for getting... Um, getting antimatter. I want it to be collected from here rather than the other place because this this is the main supply of it and I want this one to be and I want the other one to sort of just to be an emergency supply basically. So yes this is using an enormous amount of power all of that stuff is using well it's peaked at um, it peaks at about uh, 1.4 gigawatts which is a lot. Um, in fact we had a, we had a very brief peak here at about 2.2 gigawatts which is all of it. I'm not quite sure what caused that well, I mean, I am. It was all of these particle accelerators kicking in at full blast, but I don't know why they were. It was so much more demanding there. This might have been. This looks like it was after a, a period of not enough power. So maybe everything was just filling up, filling up all of the buffers at that point. Um, but either way, it is basically working. We're producing all of the stuff we want. Um, 
We've got both of the are both of these working. No, this one isn't working. Oh, we're still short of still short of coolant apparently. So I thought I'd fix that because I, this is my standard coolant producing system. I came out and dropped this in here. Um, apparently, I don't ha still don't have this running fast enough, even though I put in a lot of speed modules into all. All of these machines are now full of speed modules, but apparently it's still not enough, and we still have a massive shortage of the supercooled thermofluid. So I think I'm probably going to need to come along here and put in some beacons. The problem is. The, the decent beacons that I, I generally use won't fit in here um, because it's they just haven't left enough space. Uh, someone did point out that I was being a bit dumb and I could I could get it to fit in here just by moving this entire column of um, coolers over by one square. So I'll probably do that in or maybe even just not do it, not even all of them, but probably I probably will do all of them just for simplicity. Um, so yeah, next time I think I'll move those across, get a bit more coolant being made, and then these can run a bit faster and. And that said, we're not short of antimatter stream. It's being made faster than it's being taken away. But I suspect at some point I'm going to want to use this to power spaceships as well. So I'd like this to be a bit more of an effective factory. And a lot of these machines just aren't running because they're not needed. So in general, it needs a bit more oomph behind it, should we say. And then it'll be a bit a bit better. So yeah, we need more, more coolant for this. So <clears throat> this system is making all of the is making the um, the antimatter which I can then bring back over here by train, over to here, and turn into the Arcosphere Collectors. So that's good. Once the Arcosphere Collectors are made, they're brought over to my um, spaceship, uh, which is currently AWOL, um, or has, has, gone, has run off. Where, where, where is that at the moment? No, not, not FNEI. Uh, this one. The Donut. What are you doing at the moment? You are somewhere. Where are you? You are... Oh, you've got to Norvis. Why are you at Norvis? No, go to Norvis orbit. That makes more, much more sense. There we go. Flies over to where it's actually supposed to be. Um, and then it will probably dock automatically like that. And then in, on here, we've got these various um, uh, buffer chests. And this one is trying to fill up with Arcosphere collectors and space probe rockets. And it's also got the probe rocket silo. And that means when it flies, I can fly this out to deep space where these things come, where the Arcosphere collectors happen. And, and get this all set up. Now this isn't going to work because for, for, because of slightly complicated and dumb reasons, but I'll, I'll get back to that in a minute and probably fix it. We've also got a supply of space scaffolding in case I need to build something for that. Uh, filter insert, steel chest, all, all the sort, all the oh, and a, and a request chest, all the good stuff you need to basically have have to make this work. And we've got a uh, robot port here with some logistics bots and some construction bots. So the idea is you fill this up with all the bits and pieces it needs. It flits off to, um, to to somewhere else, like Realm of Shadows or Caltrops or any of those sort of places, and we can then and then we can then drop out the um, the the, the uh, what do we call it the, the the probe rocket launcher and and, and build everything up. So I shall, I shall demonstrate. So let's grab these. How many is that? That's twelve. That's quite a lot. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll come out. I'll fly. I'm I'm, I'm going to load this what this one by hand for now. Um, because I did have it being loaded automatically before, but for reasons that's now not practical. So over here, into that one, we'll put put in the um, the Arcosphere collectors, and then just buzz off from there. So let's now send this ship back to Caltrops. So Caltrops is the nearest um, deep space asteroid field. So send that off. I'll have a look. So that's now leave the donut is now leaving Norvis. It's going to fly across here, down here, and then go to Caltrops because this is the nearest one. So. Loading, um, so doing the Arcosphere collection is interesting. So because you, you need to go off to a deep space asteroid field like, like this one or this one or any of these ones around here. And then you launch the probe rockets with the um, Arcosphere collectors in them. They fly out, they collect the Arcosphere, they collect some Arcospheres, they bring them back and you get some. So I've launched two so far and I've had five from it each time. However, if we look in the box text, it does warn us that um, the repeated launches have diminishing returns. You might have better returns from launching different asteroid fields. So I'm going to go out there with this supply of them. I'm going to launch. I'm going to keep launching them until it, at least until it drops down to four per launch, and see how long that takes. Um, because I'd like to get a few more. Um, okay, so here we go. It's telling me how many. Yeah, how 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 I'm doing. Oh, maybe I only got four each time. I thought I th these numbers do not add up because I'm pretty sure I got ten of them. Um, and I'm pretty, and I also know I've, I've I've got more than certainly got. I've only launched from Caltrops, and it's been the same number. So those numbers do not add up. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. Oh no, wait, yes I do. Right. So when I launch the collectors, 
I've got eight because for being arbitrarily in the interstellar void. And I got a bonus two from launching from um, from Caltrop. So this looks like, and this is this is my suspicions at the moment. I could be wrong about this, but I suspect this number, the number I get from Caltrops, is going to eventually fall off, and I'm, I'm going to stop getting them from there. And the number I get from Interstellar Void is going to gradually reduce as well. So I think what this means is that after I've launched, if I launch say a billion of them from Caltrops, then I'll stop getting them from the Interstellar Void because I'll have got all of the Interstellar Void ones, and I'll stop getting them from Caltrops because I've got all the Caltrops ones. If I then go to Razorfield, then the Interstellar Void supply will still have been depleted, but I'll be able to get, but I'll be able to get the ones from Razorfield, so I'll be able to get at least a handful from there. So it does, this, this, this makes sense, and it might, it looks like I might get the, the, uh, there's, there's sort of two counters that you, you, you're, you're collecting against. Um, so it, gradually over time, it's going to get worse and worse. Even if you go to new places, you're still not going to get five every single time. So that that sort of hit, fits in a little bit with what people have been sort of hinting at. Um, and here is some actual logic behind that, and, and uh, that suggests that might be the case. So, but I'm going to go out to um, to Caltrops anyway because it's so close, and carry on launching from there and see what happens. And here we are, arriving in Caltrops. So I can anchor here, and it's convenient to sort of drop in uh, about here because then I'm right next to an asteroid that I can build on. So out here, we now need to drop down um, the, uh, the it's not that one, the space, the sp sp this launch, launch, this launch silo. So put that there. We need a blue chest next to it and a normal chest next to it, like that. So build those in, and then we need to put in a couple of inserters. I've got a big stack of white inserters in the, in the ship, so we'll use those. There we go. And then here we say we want to request some um, probe rockets, which is that one. Let's have one one at a time is sufficient actually. And also some um, also and also I need to request some of these arcosphere collectors, and we need to request some buffer chests. That's why it wasn't working. There we go. So those get brought out. <clears throat> I'll say just pass it. Pass everything across there. Pass everything across there. Right. And now we now we build the now we prepare the rocket. Um, and then once the rocket's prepared, we'll put the arcosphere collector into it, and I will launch it manually because I want to keep an eye on how many um, arcospheres it's actually bringing back. And then eventually, once I've done this a few times, I'll have a good idea of the, sort of the rates of return, and then I'll be able to decide what's a good number to num a good number of a good number of probes to launch from each uh, each place. Okay, rocket is ready. Rocket is, well, I say rocket is ready. Rocket is, is emerging from the ground at the moment, so it's preparing, I guess. That's, that's what it calls the step. Put the, uh, put the Arcosphere Collector in, so we can now launch it. That flies off, as, we, as we've seen many times before with rockets. Lifts off from here, flies out, and it will then send send the... Um, uh, what do you call it? Send, send the probe data back. Uh, Arcosphere, the, uh, sorry, the collected Arcosphere is back. Like that. How many did I get? I got four that time. Okay, so that's that's one less than before. So presumably, let's let's have a look at the um, Informatron and see how how it did that. Right. Okay. So we're still getting the one at a time from um, from being near Caltrops. However, the number found in the deep interstellar void has now gone down to three per launch rather than four per launch. So I have started to I've started to hit diminishing returns already, which is a bit a little bit disappointing. But you know, it's gonna it's, it's gonna happen. Um, however, I haven't hit diminishing returns for um, for Caltrops yet, so it's, it's still worth carrying on launching from here, I think, because they're still coming out one at a time. And if I go elsewhere in the interstellar void, it's not going to change anything because I, I'm still somewhere in the interstellar void. So, essentially, I might as well keep going from Caltrops until I, until this number stops going up, and at that point, I need to move on to the next place. So, we'll set that to go. Let's just set this to, to automatically launch and just leave that running, and we'll see see how that goes. <clears throat> so that's 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 making arcospheres. Arc once I've got the arcospheres, you then you can then process them. So we do the polarization; it turns them into into some of these types. So it might you might get out a lambda, a zeta, an epsilon, and a gamma, or you might get out a xi, a theta, a phi, and an omega. Um, and then once you've got all of once you've started playing with those, there are these recipes where you can do arcosphere folding, where you turn two types, two arcospheres, into two of a different type of arcosphere. And so the next challenge is going to be to come up with a, a recipe that keeps a system rather that keeps all of these balanced and make sure I have the 
or uh, make sure I always have the right Arcospheres that I need in order to do the processes later on. Now the nice thing is Arcospheres basically don't get used up by most of the normal processes you run them through. So generating science doesn't use them up, it just it just changes them from one type to another. And so, and each, as I say, each one, so at the moment I'm looking at, um, what am I looking at? Eps yeah, I'm looking at ways of making Epsilon Arcospheres apparently. Um, but there's, there's two recipes for that that you use, so there's, there's four different potential inputs and two, different, two other outputs that might come out with it. And then there is also the Arcosphere inversion, where you take in four Arcospheres and you get out four different types of Arcospheres. And I think there's, yeah, there's only one recipe for that. So the, uh, as I say, the idea of the whole point of Arcospheres is trying to balance all of these different recipes together to make sure you've always got the types you want and, and everything carries on working. How many Arcospheres did I get that time? 14. So I've got another, yes, another three from there and, 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 and one from Caltrop. So again, I might as well just leave this running. So that's that's Arcospheres, which is a, um, a fairly major challenge and a thing that is going is going to be the sort of the, probably the focus of, of episodes for the next month, maybe. I'm not sure. There isn't going to be one on Wednesday, so I mean that's 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 another three episodes, and I can imagine it's going to take me at least that long to get things. It's probably not going to take me very long to get a basic system up and working, but it's going to take me quite a long time to then iron out all the problems with it and and have it reli work reliably. So um, yeah, that should be interesting. Interesting, yes, that's a good word, interesting. We like that one. <laughs> I did a few other minor things as well in the last in the last run. Um, I, I think I... Did I mess around on Trellos at all? I, I, I certainly started on Trellos, but I don't think I really did anything here before I left. No, this is still in basically the same state as it was before. Um, we've got the fuel being made here as fast as we can. We're fueling the ship up. It's nearly... It's mostly full. It's got the, it's got the um, core fragments on it, so it's about ready to launch. I would still like the, all of this to go much much faster so maybe I'll put maybe I need to bring in some more beacons um, but it's ba it is basically working we're getting the ships gone and how are these doing these are all okay these these we are getting more core fragments than we are using up oil if that makes sense so it's possible so at some point we are going to the, these I think these warehouses are probably going to fill up and we're going to start having problems um, so I'll need to sort of keep a bit of an eye on that and, um, and, and and try and come up with some sort of solution to it the solution might be more of this and productivity modules and stuff as well but we shall we shall see at the moment it's it's it is working and I've got in I've got I think I've got enough core fragments in general that it's not too much of a worry so I'm not gonna so I'm not gonna faff around with that fiddle with that too much. I also did a couple of, a couple of minor things over on Tulip. Um, there was a crashed rocket down here, which has now actually been tidied up by the bots. So that's nice. Um, it was it was of course a Vulcanite rocket because those are the ones that always crash because they're the ones that come from a long, long way away. But it crash landed sort of around about here. So I've put down a requester chest that's asking for Vulcanite, and that can just load it into into this into this um, landing pad, and it'll go into the system as normal. So that that was easy enough to fix. The glass supply here is still problematic, as you'll notice this. Um, the landing pad is empty and another rocket hasn't arrived, so that's unfortunate. Um, but at the moment, it, it is everything is running. We are producing um, Naquium at at the rate that we are capable of producing Naquium at, which isn't particularly fast. But for now, it's kind of acceptable, I guess. But if we have a look over on Norvis, the problem is that the the um, <clears throat> the stone smelting down here that's making the glass. Just isn't. I think it isn't capable of keeping up with the rate that the rockets are taking it away. So, yeah, this is this is we're, we've got the glass being made here, shipped up into the into the rockets up here where it's obviously dumped into the rockets. And the rockets are taking it up into orbit um, or off to Tulip, um, but it's, I mean, it's, it's it's kind of okay. But we are struggling a little bit with the throughput here. Um, Things seem to be basically working though, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fiddle with it too much for now. One thing that isn't really work or wasn't really working was out on Henke Sesui. So actually, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier, and I said I'd get back to this, um, why I haven't made more of these um, material fabricators in order to start producing the the antimatter even more quickly. Although it looks like we are. I was gonna say border last borderline. Okay, that's only just a train's worth there. Um, and a train is on its way, so that. But unfortunately, making the material fabricators takes a load of these speed module and efficiency module sixes, and making and and making those is is, is a bit of a problem at the moment. Um, this has all ground to a halt. We've got yes, we've got machines here. They're they're working a little bit occasionally, um, 
the reason it's the reason it, it all ground to a halt, although it is now actually working again, so I'm um, I'm going to put a light to all of this, is because we'd run out of blue circuits. The the system had we'd swallowed up so many blue circuits, making all of the early stages of these modules, um, that it had it had all just stopped working, and that was because the where are blue blue circuits? Blue circuits, yes. So, as you see here, we've got I've got another empty landing pad, so that should have another rocket coming in to bring more in. But there's a shortage, and we've only got we've got forty one thousand in here, so that's that's still okay for now. But it's going to get through those pretty quickly. And the reason we're having problems with that is because these are made on Henke Sesway over here, and they're not being made all that quickly. They are dribbling into here at a, at a, steady, a steady, slow and steady rate. So we've got so this is almost ten percent full, um, <clears throat> and this is despite Despite having all of this area here, making making the blue circuits using the cheaper of the uh, of the available recipes, and so it is working, and it's working as well as it ever has. The problem is that my um, requirements for blue circuits have gone through the roof now to start making modules. So this system here is no longer capable of keeping up. So perhaps I need to have another another copy of this in order to, in order to keep that going. The problem I've discovered though. Um, is that when I came out here to go? Why is this not working? I found I found that this was a bit slow, but also we'd run out of plastic, and we ran out of plastic because we ran out of oil, and we ran out of oil as uh, the train has just arrived to drop some more off before before we actually had a problem. So it seems to be all right now. But the problem was that down here at my oil oil mine, this just wasn't this had run, started to run low and wasn't producing it. Well, it partly I don't know whether it wasn't producing it fast enough because. It, the the, uh, the wells were starting to run a bit dry or whether it's because the amount of blue circuits I was using had gone up and therefore it just couldn't keep up but either way I wasn't pulling the oil out fast enough so I came over here shoved speed modules in all of the drills and put in a beacon this beacon covers nearly all of the pump jacks which is quite nice uh, with a load more speed modules in so these are now running at um, uh, five times speed instead of instead of the one time speed they were running at before, which is a big improvement. I'm getting the oil out, so I'm getting the oil out five times as quickly as I was before, um, and I'm pretty sure that the oil that the uh, pump jacks have got to the point where they're producing the minimum that they ever will. So this is just going to be better now. There's, there's no downside to this apart from the energy usage, um, which to be honest isn't that high because pump jacks don't use that much power anyway. So even if you multiply it, even if you multiply the power they're using by um, by ten. <clears throat> it it kind of doesn't matter. They, it's still not very much power in the, in, the, in the grand scheme of things these days. So, yes, this is actually producing oil at a decent rate now. We've got 62,000 in here, and a train has just been. So, this seems like it might be okay. I am thinking, however, for the future, I'm going to probably extend this railway line up here, because there are these three patches up here that have a decent amount of oil between them. That's at 1,100%, that's 900%, that's 10 Ten hundred or a thousand percent. So if I if I if I get some extra uh, oil mines up here, then we'll have a bit more oil available. Things should run a bit better, and we we won't need to worry about about this running out. Because if we look here, we this is okay. It's not quite request. It's not quite got to the point where it's going to request another another train load yet. But it's not going to be all that long before it decides actually a bit more oil would be useful. So yes, that's something on the on the to-do list to make sure make uh, make sure this carries on working a bit better. And probably once I've done that, I think yes, having another copy of this would be a good idea. And maybe I'll. I, I was thinking I could make I could upgrade this to um, to, to using the better um, better um, uh, beacons and possibly using better modules in all of these machines. But I don't know if it's worth it. Um, because the extra, the higher tiers of modules are rather expensive, and that's my current, my, my current bottleneck, and putting in and, and just putting in more speed modules into these to make these run faster, wouldn't actually produce anything extra. It would just use more power. So probably it's good as it is. I suspect I just need to make a copy of this entire thing in order to get twice as many blue circuits being made. So I think that's probably quite that 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 has a certain potential. I think that should should work and should just. Yeah, should 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 just work is basically what I'm trying to say, and and um and give me all and, and, and uh, seriously increase the supply of blue blue circuits in order to keep that running. And that is in fact now all I have to all have all I 
try again. That is all I have for you uh, th this week. There will be no videos next week, basically at all, because I'm not going to have time to do anything, because I'm, it's, it's show week, so I'm just going to be in the theatre all week, and nothing else in my life is going to get a look in. So sorry about that, but everything will resume as normal the week after, so there'll be the Minecraft stream on Monday, where I shall run through, uh, carry on with the automation of all of the the, the, not, the, uh, the blood magic that I've been doing. There'll be a Factorio stream on Wednesday, when I'll carry on with everything with the Arcospheres and everything else I've been talking about today. There'll be, hopefully, there'll be a, there'll be GTA videos then starting up again on the Thursdays because I'll maybe have a little bit of time in order to make those. We'll see how that goes, and of course the uh, summary videos at the weekend where I tell you all about what I've been doing, as, as you're as you're well aware. So. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget, like, subscribe, etc., etc. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to get get my channel up to a thousand subscribers, and I'm about two thirds of the way there. So you know, it's going quite well. But the more you can help me with that, the better. And uh, we shall see see how this th see how things go next um, uh, week after next. I'm trying to get everything up to speed. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.